our dear viewers and listeners. Greetings to you in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. And as we open up today's session, let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you. We stand in awe of your glory, of your majesty, of your love and power. For you are from everlasting to everlasting. With you there is no shadow of turning. We stand on your truth. We rest in what you did for us at Calvary. We yield to the leading of your spirit. Have your way in us, King of glory. Let your word prevail over all the words of men. We surrender under the guidance of your authority, King of glory. We step aside that you might increase and reign over and over. We are humbled at your presence your glory and what you did for us at Calvary. Have your way today, Jesus. Spirit of the living God, we yield to you. Reign through us. Touch our lives once more. The glory, the honor, the power and the praise is yours alone. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our dear viewers and listeners, we'll be taking today's text from the book of Revelation chapter 14. We'll pick it up from verse 8 and take it all the way to verse 13. The Bible says, Then and another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen that great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead, all on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night. Who worship the beast and his image. And whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now. Yes, says the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Sense of God from this text the Bible has significant lessons to bring to us as we have seen in the previous sessions that we've heard. From the message of the second angel, it is unfair to us the picture of Babylon the Great. That false system 
which comes in a representation of a church that will appear in the end time. And God brings us this picture before her. Before it appears, he wants us to know the characteristic of this church or this system. That number one, it is treacherous. Secondly, it is adulterous. Thirdly, it will come to ruin. It may come with a lot of grandeur, with a lot of glamour. It may have a lot of fame. But the message is profound. It will fall. And that is uncertain using the test that the angel uses. He comes with a, a certain level of certainty. And he speaks concerning this fall in the past tense, confirming to us that this will suddenly come with a level of certainty. He makes this verb twice. Twice we see him saying Babylon is falling. And he pronounces this as a great city. But it is inevitable as with everything that is not founded on Jesus Christ. It will come to ruin. Then we see the message from the third angel that comes to us from verse 9. And this is directed specifically to those people that will receive the mark of the beast. Who make that decision to follow the beast? Who exerts economic control on the whole earth? Whereby, like we saw in chapter 13, men will not be able to buy or sell without having this mark imprinted on their hand or on their forehead. Here the angel announces that this is a fatal choice. And anyone who receives this mark is going to experience the fury of God. The wrath of God to its fullness. Look what, what the Bible says. Verse 10, the Bible says, He Himself. In other words, there is no substitution you yourself that has received the mark shall experience the wrath of God poured out in full strength. That is not a position you would like to be in. And he goes on to tell us that when you receive the mark, this will not be a temporary sentence. And he uses imagery to paint this picture. First of all, it is one thing for you to be punished in secret. This one will have witnesses. For the Bible tells us Bible. that you they will be tormented day and night with fire and brimstone in the presence of the angels and in the presence of the Lamb, the one that they rejected. Secondly, the Bible says the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. Point is, there 
torment increases. Their ascension speaks to an increase. And this increase has no end. So it is pain to the nth degree. Pain that is varying in degrees. But increasing to in intensity. To measures unknown to man. You would not like to be in that position. And this is the message to all of those. That we take the choice. Of receiving the mark of the beast. Why is that? So, because by receiving the mark, they have decided to follow a false Christ. And the message is very clear that their pain will be eternal. So what does that call you? us to do. It calls us to run to the cross. To, to run to Jesus Christ. Christ. And here the Bible says that here is the patience of the saints. Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. What is he asking us to do? He's asking us to be patient as God makes out his justice. He wants you never to yield even one step to anything that the beast proposes. That at no point in your life will you give in to the glorification of the man of the hour you need to glorify only and only one and that is the Lord Jesus Christ so this for us who are faithful it calls for a faithfulness until the end it calls for faithfulness until death. It calls for faithfulness until we cross over from this life. And here the Bible unveils to us a promise. It says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. This is an exciting portion of Scripture. Because here John hears another voice. It is not the voice of the angels. This is God himself commanding him to write. Not that he had not written before. He was bearing a record of everything. But God wants him to emphasize what is going to happen. And he says, I want you to write that there is a blessing, there is a blessedness that comes to the dead who die in the Lord. Now, I want you to look at this and try to understand it. The word blessed is the Greek word makarios. Now this is a word used in a way of congratulating. So it is a way of somebody saying you are supremely privileged. You are fortunate. You are well off. You are in a privileged condition. Happy is the condition that you are in. He's, remember he's saying blessed are the dead. 
who die in the Lord. Now here he qualifies it. He says it is not everyone who dies. But it is only those who die in the Lord. You see, today when people die, we tend to sentimentalize everything. And we say, oh, he has gone to a happier place. He has gone to a better place. That blessing, if you read this scripture, only applies to those who die in the Lord. Now, what does it mean to die in the Lord? It means, first of all, you are in a relationship, a vital union with the Lord Jesus. By faith, while you are still alive. And then, at death, you are still in this relationship. So it is a relationship you cultivate when you are alive. Breathing and well. This is what Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21 where he makes this declaration that to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why, why is he saying that? It is because when you are living you are in this relationship with Jesus Christ and when you die you get to a place where you even enjoy this fellowship more with him. This is the blessing he talks about. Because in the present, your life is hidden with Christ in God. So when you live here, you continue with this relationship that goes on to all eternity. Isn't that amazing? But I need you to understand that this statement is restrictive. It does not say all dead. It says all all those who are dead and have died in the Lord. And pronounces a blessing upon them. Praise be to God. Now you may ask me how about those who die without the Lord. Hebrews 10 31 tells us that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now look at this. Those that have believed on Jesus Christ, it is a blessed thing. Those that have not believed on him, it is a fearful thing. So where is this blessing comes from? Paul tells us that to be absent from the body, it is to be present with the Lord. That is the comfort he gives us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. You see, I have attended several funerals and the first time before I came to the Lord, it shocked me. I went to this funeral service and the mood of the funeral service was a celebration and I kept wondering why are these people happy when somebody has just passed on and the excitement to them was this person was with the Lord and that blessed assurance is something that touched my heart and I kept asking, what is it that gives them this assurance that they, when they pass on from this life, have gone to a better place? That assurance is only given 
when you have the Lord Jesus. Why are they blessed? They are blessed because their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. They are sure that on that day, their name will be found there. Why are they blessed? Because the day they come to the Lord, Jesus tells us that there is rejoicing in heaven. Heaven is celebrating their entrance into the kingdom of light. Why are they blessed? Because Jesus has gone to prepare a place for them. He tells us that in John 14. He tells us, let not our hearts be worried. He says, believe in God and believe in me also. In my father's house are many mansions. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. But he says, I am going to prepare a place for and you. And I will come back again. Now look, look, listen to that. That is the other blessing. Jesus is coming back to collect his own. He's not coming for everybody. No, no, no. He's coming for those that are in a relationship with him. For the Bible tells us that there will be a sound of a trumpet and the Lord will descend. And those that are dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive will be caught up and together we will be with the Lord always. Isn't that a blessed decision? Isn't that a blessed moment? Why do we say they are blessed? It is because once they leave this side of earth they will be with the Lord forever and ever. The Lord that loved them left his home above, came and bled and died, shed his blood for them, washed away their sins, called them, sanctified them, glorified them, and he now places them with him in the heavenly places. Isn't that a blessed Please. The Bible tells us blessed are the dead who die in ah, the Lord from now on. Now when for many people when they read this from now on some argue that this means that it is restricted to a period. But this is not what the text is trying to say. The statement here is contrasting the marvelous blessing that comes to them that they now get into against the backdrop of the previous eight dreadful times that they have departed from. Remember they are coming from a time when the Antichrist is in charge. And they are now moving into a place where they will rest from all their labors. For this is what the Spirit says. Yes. That they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Now, this is something I had an experience sometime that shocked me. I was at the airport to pick someone, and so there was this family that came to pick up one of their own. Now, when this person came through, 
kati omuntu we yajja i think he was one of those people that traveled light be ba muku banta abatambula ngate baina mikuku so he only had a carry on that he was holding yaina buntu butono bwe yatambula nabo and the expectation of the family ngakati bando bo bali basubira possibly he had been away for a long time alabika yali amaze banga was that he would come with a lot of luggage pushing a carriage along Now when they saw him just coming with the carry-on, they ran away and hid. So he looked around it. He got out a phone tried to call them. And they were not so far away from where I was. I could see exactly what was happening. And they literally hid from him. They switched off their phones. What was his crime? Musangochi. He came with a very light burden yeah. with something very light to carry home. Yeah. I believe they expected to see a lot of stuff. And as I stood bemused by what I was seeing. The Holy Spirit whispered to me. And said, "You see, what is it that you're going to carry?" when you get home what is it that you will carry along are you going to travel light or are you going to carry a lot of stuff let me put it this way as christians we are called to follow christ Whatever he leads us. But in this journey, we are accountable to how we respond to this call. So as we walk on this narrow way, having gone through the narrow gate, in this journey with the Lord, there are a number of things that happen to us. He goes before us. He equips us. And as he equips us, he encourages us along the way. To live for him. To be fruitful in this life. When we grow where he cheers us by his spirit. So that at the end of the journey. When we cross over from this world, he is there to congratulate us on a job well done. And he does not just congratulate us. The Bible says he will reward us. So in this work of faith, there is something that never leaves us. There is something that follows us. Every step of our way. He has promised I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. But as we go along, our works follow us. Our works trail us. These works follow every human. Not just the believers in Jesus Christ. They follow everyone into eternity. Now for the believers in Jesus Christ when the works follow you and there are good works on the other side of eternity you will hear these seven words from the Lord well thou good and faithful servant on the other side There will be others whose works will also follow them. But they will follow them to hell. So your works follow your faith. So if your faith is in Jesus Christ, then your works will follow your faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible 
tells us when we read it that these works will be a general result as well as detailed results of the choices that we have made. And the will consist of a number of things. Number one, how you aided others or how you hindered them. Number two, how you escaped the reality or how you persevered for Jesus Christ. So these works will consist of your collateral damage and your collateral good for his cause. These works will consist of your casualties and will consist of your victories as well. They will consist of your good and they will consist also of your bad. They will consist of the choices you made when you did not follow Christ and the decisions that you made when you decided to follow Christ. Your works, the point I want to make, will follow you to eternity. The question we need to ask, what kind of works are you going to carry along? For the Bible tells us Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding, in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So there is nothing that we do in the Lord that we are not doing for the sake of So there is nothing that we do in the Lord that is in vain. So to you who is serving the Lord, when nobody is applauding, when nobody is saying well done, when there is no commendation coming through, be of good cheer. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The Bible tells us, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. That's what the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10 to emphasize the point that there is nothing that you do in the Lord that will be in vain. So what will happen when you cross over? The Bible has said their works will follow them. And this is what the Bible tells us. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 13 it says for no other foundation can anyone lay than which is laid which is Jesus Christ in other words everything that we do has a motivation, has a foundation. But we need to be very careful that whatever we are doing, whatever foundation we are laying, it is Jesus that is the foundation. Why is that important? Because the Bible goes on to tell us that now if anyone builds on this foundation with God, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, 
Straw. It says each one's work will become clear for the day we declare it. Because it is revealed with fire. Or revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort here Paul draws a pictorial representation of the works that will follow us and he says some works will be like wood others works will be like straw or hay others it will be gold or silver or precious stones and says the testing of this work will be the fire now imagine when you take fire and place it on straw. What happens? What you have is ash. If you take fire and put it on wood, what do you have? Ash. If you take fire and place it on gold, what do you have? Purified gold. Now, we need to understand this because what we do now has repercussion to the reward that we will get. Paul continues to tell us that if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. The reward will be to the work that will endure after the test by fire. So we need to ask the questions. Why am I doing what I am doing? Am I doing it to the praise of men? Or am I doing it to this one audience who is Jesus Christ? Who is my Lord in everything? Because we do so many things. And often we get frustrated when nobody is praising us. When nobody is recognizing what we are doing. When after we have done everything that we have done, where we expect somebody to at least acknowledge what we get is ridicule. I'm here to tell you there is one that is watching. There is one that knows everything there is one that is not unjust. He will reward you. Look at what he tells the church in Philadelphia. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11, he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. He says, Hold fast what you have. Now, hold fast what you have. Don't give it up. Don't exchange it. Don't throw it away. Hold fast to what you have. He says, when you do that, so that no one will take your crown. There is a crown that awaits you on the other side for how you have lived life on this side. Now you may say, I have not begun anything. There is nothing I have done. There is a message for you. It's not too late. Even now, you can't begin on this journey. For the Bible continues to tell us. We are still in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And the Bible tells us in verse 15 that if anyone's work is burned, 
The message is clear. It is possible that all your work will be banned. And he says, <laughs> he will suffer loss. In other words, everything you labored because of the motive you didn't build on Christ. It turned out to be that you are building straw upon this foundation. In the eyes of the world, it may be a magnificent structure. In the eyes of the world, you may have rocked. In the eyes of the world, it may seem like you deserve to be applauded every moment. You captured the headlines. You were the talk of everyone. But Jesus put it to us and says, Woe unto you if everyone speaks good about you. We need to understand that there is only one audience to please. That is the one who will reward us. And everything we do, we need to step back and ask the question. Why am I doing what I am doing? What is my motivation? Is it the praise of men that I want? Is it because I, I want to be given, uh, to be recognized as the most diligent? Or is it because I am doing it for the glory of God? You see, there are so many things that we do with the connotation, I'm doing this for the glory of God. But what happens if nobody recognizes? Do you murmur? Do you sulk? If you do any of that, then you get to understand that you are not doing it for the glory of God. You are doing it for the glory of you. You are the subject, you are the audience. You are singing for you. You are preaching for you. You are ministering for you. And that should not be the case. Because when the work is burned, you will suffer loss. And you don't have to suffer loss. Yes, you may say, yes, I will be saved. Yes, but as through fire. So why all this? Why through, go through all this and have nothing on the other side? So we need to ask ourselves the question. What works are going to follow me what are those words that I, I will hear after I have left this? I am reminded of a song. It is a song that was composed in the year 1877, which is almost 144 years ago. It was composed by Charles Carroll Ruther. And the song goes, Must I go and empty handed? That's my redeemer meet. Not one day of service to give him. Lay no trophies at his feet. The chorus goes as follows. It says, Must I go and empty hand? Must I meet my Savior soon? Not one soul with which to bring him. Must I empty handed go? This was a song that was composed. After this man listened to a testimony of a young man. 
Sajuno ya malo kuli zo vujulizi wo mvubu ko. Who had given his life to Jesus Christ. And why he was on his deathbed. Katinga alimukufa. A minister came to him. Omweza na jaja. And he saw this young man crying. Ngalabo mvubu ka alimaziga. And he asked him. Nabuza. Why are you weeping? Rachi okungu. When you cross over from here. Unava wano kunsi. You will meet the Lord. Mukama ogenda kumusisinga. Who loved you and gave his life for you? E yakwagala nawa yo bulamu bwe kulubwa. And this young man said I'm not crying. Ubukana gamba sikungubaka. Because of where I'm going. Kubanga oreyo jendaga. But this is what he said. Nechino che yagamba. When I look at all the years of sinning I've had. We nete gireze emyaka jemaze mu chibi. If I could recall them now. Singa we nyete gireza kati and give them to my savior and follow his will i said but why must i go now what is it that i have got to bring to him what is it that i'm going to lay at his feet if you were called home today <clears throat> what is it that will follow you what is it that you are going to meet the lord with? How many souls have you ministered to? How many souls have you reached out to? How many people have you blessed? How has your life been lived? Have you lived it in gluttony? Everything comes to you. And there is nothing coming out of you to bless others. Or have you lived your life as a blessing? That the gifts, the lives, the, the, the works that you have done will follow you for all eternity. This is what Peter says to us. Peter no chato gamba. In first Peter. Peter de Jesus chapter 1 and verse 4. Sule soko nyiryo ro kuna. Concerning the reward. Eliku okwe pera. This is what he says. Agamba bwa. He says we will enjoy. Tutujja kusanyuka. And I love that. He said we will enjoy. Tutujja kujumirwa the reward. In other words, this reward will bring us immeasurable joy. And he speaks concerning this reward. He says this reward is number one incorruptible. He says this reward is undefiled. This reward is unfading. In other words, that there is nothing that removes the glitter and the glamour from it. It is a reward that is eternally blissful. And he says this reward is reserved in heaven for us. And that is you. But it begins by laying your life on the foundation of Jesus. It begins with a life surrendered to Jesus. It begins with a life that is willing to follow him. To live for him every moment of the breath that he gives you. Every day of the life that he graciously gives you. Then when you live here, yes, says the Spirit, you will rest from all your labor. And your works will follow you. The question I ask, what works will follow you? You see, without Jesus, whatever good works you do here, they will follow you to hell. And all that will be waste. With Jesus, then the works will follow you to heaven. 
Tebi kula bina kugobele da pakeri muguru. Where you will receive a reward. Wajoku we wembera. That the Bible tells us is incorruptible. Bible je gamba teyo nonika. That is undefiled. Teidi koka viko na. And that is unfading. Adi te sobo la kugwa ako. Jesus. Yesu. Has promised. Asuriza. That when you die. Wofa. You are blessed. That your works will follow you. And that he will reward you. So what works will follow you. So let's start with the one that has not received Jesus Christ. Why don't you receive him in your life now? Ask him to wash away your sins. Ask him to forgive you. To fill you with his Holy Spirit and to lead you into the way everlasting. Why don't you pray with us now? Say, Father, I thank you because of your grace that was manifest in Jesus Christ. I believe and I admit that I am a sinner and I need a Savior in my life. Jesus, yes. I invite you in my life. Become the Lord and the Savior of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write my name in the book of life. Guide my footsteps from this day forward. And help me, Lord. To live the rest of the time that I have for you. That the life may be lived profitably. And that the works that will follow me. Hereafter. Will be the works. That will cause me to receive a reward. Thank you Lord Jesus. For saving. Amen. Amen. You have been wonderfully saved. Simple as that. We are saved by faith. We believe that he is Lord. And we declare it with our mouth. And we are saved. Now I'm going to speak to someone. That may be in a situation. That you think you can't get out of. When you look at your life, every day you have lived, you have lived for you. There has never been a day when you have lived your life for the Lord. Today, you can change all that so that you can begin again with the Holy Spirit guiding you that your latter days will be days lived fruitfully for the Lord. And these good works will follow you. Why don't you pray? Dear Lord, I thank you for the life that you have given me. Thank you for the years that I have lived on this earth. Lord, I come before you. I acknowledge that I have not lived this life fruitful. I have lived this life selfish. I've lived this life for me. Everything has been about Everything has been about my growth. Everything has been about my pride. Everything has been about advancing. Lord, I ask for your pardon. Forgive and wash me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Open the eyes of my understanding. That from this moment henceforth, I will live for you. My life will be a life that we believed for your glory. That everything I do and think, everything I purpose to do, 
that will be done with the frame of mind. That the glory, the honor, the praise comes back to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Guide me from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today is the beginning of beginnings. The Lord by His Spirit is going to guide you and your life is going to be a fruitful one. And the fruit that you will bear will be fruit that will abide to the glory, the honor, and the praise of our Lord. Savior Jesus Christ. Now there is a number on that screen. We ask you to make that call. Tell us what God is doing. Let's celebrate what God has done in your life. Remember, you must take home works that will abide. You must take home a trophy to lay at his feet. And when we cross over, we will hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. From Dominion Church. Till we meet again. Shalom. God, Richard, bless you. Come on,